Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all the witnesses for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged this morning because I heard both Dr. Lomberg and Chair Smith talk about the importance of investing in technology and research and, and clean energy. I absolutely agree. Uh, I also uh, understand, however, that it is Im important to reduce carbon emissions while we are doing that. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Sear, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your testimony. and you, you testified that businesses have recognized the economic value of action. And I agree. My home state of Oregon has many companies that have stepped up and demonstrated their commitment. Uh, companies like Nike, Genentech, Intel, Lamb Research, Portland General Electric, Electric. They're among the more than 150 companies nationwide that have now signed the American Business Act on Climate Pledge. These companies have made business specific commitments to take significant actions to address climate change, and they've expressed their support for a strong Paris Agreement. And as, as we heard this morning just a few days ago, Bill Gates unveiled the world's largest clean energy research and development partnership, all very encouraging. So, Dr. Steer, how are these businesses supporting a strong international agreement? Can you talk a little bit about why these business leaders see this not only as a critical issue, but also as economically viable and valuable to their bottom line? Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman. Um, and, and let me also say how pleased I am that we are in agreement on research and development and the kind of announcement that President Obama and 20 other leaders yesterday made on a doubling of research and investment for renewable energy is, uh, is profoundly encouraging, especially when linked to the private sector and the efforts of, of Bill Gates. The private sector uh, has a very major role to play in the climate talks. Uh, this weekend, thousands of private sector leaders will gather in Paris, and they'll do two things. One, they'll say, this is what we are doing. And, and many of them, for example, will say, look, we've looked at the science. Um, we have no actual obligations necessarily to reduce our own uh, greenhouse gases legally, but we're going to do it. And some of them are saying, we're not only going to do better, we're going to do enough. That means that they are looking at the science and they're saying, what would it take for us to do enough to reduce our greenhouse gases so that the problem would be solved. And in Paris, there will be a whole set of coalitions that are announced on renewable energy, on energy efficiency, a whole range of issues relating to greening supply chains, deforestation. So first, they're saying, here's what we're doing. And then second, they're saying to governments, look, uh, we're, we're keen to act, but you've got to help us out here. Since 1923, every economist has told us since Professor Pigou at Cambridge University showed how you price externalities, that it is much better to tax bad things than good things. Stop taxing good things like your work and your profits and, and, and start taxing bad things like congestion and pollution. If you do that, the private sector is saying, you'll help us a lot because you'll, you'll shift the compass and you'll once and for all say, we're going in this direction, which is better for our grandchildren rather than this direction. The problem we have at the moment is it's sort of a dance. They don't know whether we're heading towards a low carbon future or a high carbon future. So they're saying, please, to the government, act firmly, clearly, set a long-term uh, 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 target. Thank you. And, and uh, you talked about here the private sector, but you also state that a growing body of evidence shows that economic growth is not in conflict with efforts to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases. And you mentioned the role of subnational actors like states in addressing climate change. Our Portland, Oregon Mayor Charlie Hales is in Paris uh, speaking. Uh, as, as we speak. So uh, when I served in the Oregon legislature, we passed a renewable portfolio standard uh, to require large utilities to increase the use of renewable resources. That and other policies and commitments have created uh, meaningful employment in that sector and clean energy. Can you talk further about your statement that environmental protection and economic development go hand in hand, uh, especially when you combine the private sector and then the, the sub, subnational actors as well? Yes, indeed. Um, it wasn't long ago when we really did believe there was a trade-off. Uh, it'd be nice to address climate change, but it would cost us a lot. We've learned so much in the last few years. Even if one looks at the performance of stock markets, you will see, if you take, for example, the CDP Green Index, you'll see over the last four years they performed considerably better than just any old Standard & Poor's Index, for example. So going green actually pays. 
and uh, as you say, uh, Congresswoman, that, that the states that have put renewable energy standards, turns out that actually citizens are saving money. Just as we show that, for example, um, having fuel economy standards um, uh, will save uh, consumers, the new fuel economy standards will save consumers you know, several thousand dollars in fuel over the life of the, uh, the, the, the vehicle. And so adding these things together, there is a dynamism here that actually that economic models can't capture very well. And, and here I do agree with, with my good friend uh, uh, Bjorn Lomborg here. I mean, economic models actually are deeply flawed um, in the sense that, that the economy is really a very dynamic thing. And it turns out the five things that I mentioned um, all, add, all move in the same direction to, in, to show that actually climate action can lead to more economic growth. But very few economic models can really capture those well. Thank you, Dr. Stier. I see my time has expired. I yield back. Thank you.